when confronted and pressed on why God would create and allow evil to exist in the world, most people respond that it's because God gives us free will, and therefore evil exists because of man, not God. People may choose to do evil things of their own accord, or through the influence of demigods like Satan, but the good God has nothing to do with it, because his only part to play was in providing us all with free will. But is that really the case? Can God be so easily let off the hook? Does man truly possess this prized and pedestalized concept called free will, or is that too mostly an illusion? Firstly, it must be reiterated that God by definition being the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent creator of all things is alone responsible for the existence of absolutely everything. That means every mosquito, leech, lice, tick, flea, ringworm, tapeworm, hookworm, and every other blood-sucking parasite in existence. That means every earthquake, blizzard, avalanche, landslide, wildfire, hurricane, tornado, tsunami, cyclone, hailstorm, lightning strike, volcanic eruption, flood, drought, famine, and every other terrible natural disaster. That means every flu and fever, hemorrhoid and hernia, bruise and broken bone, every debilitating case of cancer, diabetes, heart disease, autism, asthma, allergies, measles, mumps, migraines, menstrual cramps, meningitis, and more, the list of agonizing ailments could fill their own book. Suffice to say, God created the conditions for a veritable buffet of suffering here on earth, and when a child is born with a torturous and terminal brain tumor, when a mother suffers and dies during a painful delivery, or when whole innocent families die of floods or famine, it is because the world was created to be this way. The world could have just as easily been complete without parasites, natural disasters, and diseases, but the inclusion of such creative torments were clearly the conscious and intentional choice of our Creator. Likewise, the necessity to constantly kill and eat the life energy of other sentient beings simply to survive must have also been a conscious and purposeful decision by our Creator. So where within such self-destructive choices determined by God do us created, subjective beings living in this world have free will? Do I have the free will to stop lions from eating gazelles? Do I have the free will to end famines and pestilence? Do any of us have the free will to end the constant cycle of suffering here? How free are we really in the choices we make? Am I free to eat razor blades or drink gallons of bleach? I could attempt to do such things, but I'm certainly not free to do them in the sense of having no consequences or even tolerable consequences. Am I free to flap my arms and fly to the moon or breathe while swimming underwater? Of course not. The Creator has already determined the range of choices available allowing us only a limited list of options for any given situation. For example, I may use my free will to jump off a cliff, but no matter how fast I flap my arms, no matter how hard I pray, and no matter how much self-belief or positive thinking I manifest will stop me from smashing into the ground below. I cannot will myself to fly, I cannot will another person to love me, and I cannot will away suffering, aging, or death. So where and when do we actually exercise this elusive entity known as free will? When I woke up and dressed myself this morning, was that an act of free will? My clothing choices were constrained by my body type, income, climate, material, trends, and what items were actually in my closet. I could choose not to wear clothes, but that would start a whole other chain of events beyond my free will, where I might catch pneumonia, my neighbors might think I'm crazy, the police might arrest me for indecent exposure, and I might spend the night locked in a steel cage, all for attempting to exercise my supposed free will. There are far more determined choices already made for us than the actual free choices we have to make for ourselves, regardless of how much we will them to be otherwise. When you consider the limitations of our physiology, physical laws, societal laws, societal norms, personality types, character flaws, strengths, weaknesses, the will of others, and a host of other factors, the term free will reveals itself to be a complete misnomer. 
when carefully considered, the concept becomes so nuanced that it disappears into a sea of determinism. In ultimate terms, the only being who could truly have free will is God. Since God is the objective, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent creator, God has no subjective limitations, boundaries, dependencies, or competing wills to contend with. God created our physiology, the physical world, and the laws that govern it. God determined every aspect of our being, every cell, every organ, from our eyes to our toes, to our minds, egos, and emotions. Every twinge of sadness and every pang of hunger was designed to feel that way and to elicit certain reactions. We may attempt to use our freedom or exercise our will within those constraints, but it's analogous to fish swimming upstream a never-ending river. How can an objective creator being's omnipotence meaningfully coexist with subjective created being's free will? If everything we see, hear, taste, touch, feel, and think was intentionally created to be that way by an all-powerful entity, how can we claim any thought-based decision, sense-based reaction, or emotion-based preference as our own? Think of it this way. How much free will do characters have in a dream? When you're dreaming, how much agency does each individual character in your dream have when making decisions? The dreamer is the sole arbiter of all decisions made in the dream. Dream characters have no autonomy whatsoever, apart from the dreamer, because the dreamer is the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent creator of all dream characters and the entire dream world itself. People may fancy themselves as separate individuals with free will to act this way or that throughout the dream, but instantly upon awakening, the dreamer remembers that they were actually everyone in the dream. During the dream state of consciousness, each character believed they were exercising their own free will throughout every situation in the dream. But in reality, the one responsible for everything that happened, good or evil, comedy or tragedy, the only entity who ever truly had any agency in the first place was the dreamer.